dementia, it's sweeping across every industrialized country. People are, unfortunately, as they age, they're losing their capacity to think and to remember and to recognize the people they love and care about. And there's not much medical science has to offer in way of treatment. But there are some new studies that have come out on vitamin B1, specifically benfotiamine. So I'm gonna show you those studies because if you have early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, you might wanna consider using this nutritional supplement in your repertoire of health. So this first study was published in 2016, long-term cognitive improvement after benfotiamine administration in patients. What is benfotiamine? This is a form of vitamin B1. It's a fat-soluble form of vitamin B1. And so what they did in this study is they gave, for 18 months, they gave 300 milligrams daily of benfotiamine to, um, to some patients to, to, and then tracked their progress. And what they found, you can see here, benfotiamine significantly improved the cognitive abilities of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease patients independently of brain amyloid accumulation. Our study provides new insight to the development of disease modifying therapy. Now the problem with this study was that it was a very small study. It was only done on five people. So not a ton of data, but it is promising and especially when you add it to this follow-up study that was done. Also a small scale study, but this is where it starts. We start in small trials and then we work our way up. This study was published in 2020. You can see here, benfotiamine and cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease. And this was a, a randomized placebo controlled phase 2A clinical trial. So this was a 12 month treatment. They used benfotiamine again, which is vitamin B1. And in this trial, they used 300 milligram dose twice a day BID twice a day in these patients. And what they found is they found improvements in their, in their cognitive rating assessment. So that the scale that they use is called an ADAS-COG. It's an assessment scale for cognitive uh, subscale. And so they found improvements in these patients versus the placebo group. So their conclusion was that oral benfotiamine is safe and potentially efficacious in improving cognitive outcomes among persons with mild cognitive impairment and mild um, Alzheimer's disease. So again, keyword in both of these studies, at least so far, again, smaller studies is mild. So if you are finding yourself struggling with memory now, if your doctor is saying, hey, you have mild dementia, it's not progressed to an advanced stage, you really might want to consider talking to them about vitamin B1 in the form of benfotiamine. Now, if we look at why this works, benfotiamine is thiamine. And so if you look at this diagram here, this is just a summary of the importance of why thiamine is so necessary and how it plays a role. You see thiamine is a vitamin necessary for proper cell function. It is its deficiency leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, lactate and pyruvate accumulation, and consequently to focal thalamic degeneration manifested as a Wernicke's encephalopathy. So this is a type of neurological damage in the brain. It can also lead to severe, even fatal neurological and cardiovascular complications, including heart failure, um, neuropathy leading to ataxia, so loss of balance, as well as paralysis, confusion, again, this is part of what dementia is, right? Confusion or delirium. The most common risk factor for thiamine deficiency is alcohol abuse. I would argue that if you're on a diuretic for your blood pressure, you need to talk to your doctor about the fact that that diuretic is depleting your vitamin B1. Again, a lot of patients who develop dementia have a history of cardiovascular disease and so their doctors are treating their cardio risk factors with drugs like diuretics, but again, deplete that vitamin B1. Well, why is that important? Because vitamin B1 plays a lot of critical roles in the body, including in the nervous system. So you can see here, 
Part of its job is energy production by your cells. Remember, your brain, pound for pound, uses more energy than any other organ in the body. So it's pretty important that your brain can generate energy and it needs thiamine to do that. But we also know neural signaling. You need thiamine to generate the neurotransmitters acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter that the brain cells use to communicate with each other. And you can't make acetylcholine without thiamine. You also need uh, you also need thiamine to make GABA and glutamate, which are also neurotransmitters. You see neuronal signal transmission as well as the synthesis or production of myelin. Myelin is the white matter. It's the coating around the nerves that allow those nerves to send trans or transduce signals effectively. We know that it also has an important role in energy production in mitochondria. Again, mitochondria is where some of the pathology that we see in dementia. So B1 playing that role in mitochondrial energy production. We know immune system acts as an antioxidant. It acts as a protective role for white blood cells. We know it's an antioxidant with its cellular reducing power as well as its ability to regulate reactive oxygen species. Now I wanna point one last thing out. It's ability to convert glucose into energy. Your body takes glucose from the food that you eat and one of the mechanisms of breaking that glucose down requires thiamine. And if you can't do that, one of the side effects is an increased blood glucose. That increase in blood glucose increases the risk for diabetes, high blood sugar. Now, some doctors, some researchers are looking at Alzheimer's and dementia as type three diabetes. So thiamine plays a critical, critical role in regulating blood sugar and especially regulating blood sugar in the brain. So if you have early onset dementia and you haven't yet started taking thiamine, again, talk to your doctor about it. This is especially true if you're on the diuretic. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button below. Hey, if you've taken thiamine and found, or benfotiamine and found it helpful for your memory or for your cognitive function, leave me a note below. I'd love to see your comment. Thanks.